Hi, I'm Nicholas Kilzer. I'm the Senior Science Editor at World Book Publishing. Saltosaurus was one of the large sauropod dinosaurs that lived about 80 million years ago in what is now South America. The sauropods were large dinosaurs that walked on four stout, strong legs, much like those of an elephant. Nearly all sauropods had a long neck, a small head, a long tail, and a huge deep chest and stomach region. Sauropods were the largest of the plant-eating dinosaurs. They fed on the leaves of tall shrubs and such trees as conifers. They included some of the largest land animals that ever walked on Earth. Saltosaurus was a member of a group of sauropods that paleontologists called titanosaurs. As the name implies, these were enormous animals, although Saltosaurus was a relatively small member of this group. Saltosaurus stood only about 40 feet, or 13 meters, and only weighed about 10 tons, compared to the 50 or 100 or more tons of its titanosaur cousins. What set the titanosaurs apart from other sauropod dinosaurs? Well, the main difference is that titanosaurs had a coat of armor. Paleontologists believe that most, if not all, of the titanosaurs had tough, bony plates covering their bodies. This would have provided extra protection from the large meat-eating dinosaur predators that populated the earth during the later stages of the age of the dinosaurs. Most sauropods relied on their huge size to protect them from predators. Even a giant meat-eater like Tyrannosaurus rex would have had a hard time bringing down a full-grown sauropod. But sauropod young would have been vulnerable to predators. The bony armor of the titanosaurs may have been a key adaptation that allowed the young of these gentle herbivores to survive in a predator-filled environment. During this time, the titanosaurs lived all over the earth. Fossils of these great beasts have been found everywhere from Italy to Australia and even New Zealand. But in the Cretaceous period, between about 145 and 65 million years ago, other sauropods declined in the northern half of the world. The titanosaurs, however, remained the dominant plant eaters in what is now South America, India, and Africa. More titanosaur fossils have been discovered in South America than on any other continent. Paleontologists wonder why the sauropods died out where they did, and why did the titanosaurs like Saltosaurus survive in the south? They have several theories. Beginning several hundred million years ago, a series of collisions between smaller land masses began to form a giant supercontinent called Pangaea. Pangaea contained nearly all of the Earth's land in a single continuous land mass. Pangaea was made up of two larger connected land masses. There was a southern region called Gondwana or Gondwana land and a northern region called Laurasia. Gondwana land included what is now Africa, Antarctica, Australia, India, and South America. Laurasia consisted of what is now Europe, Asia, and North America. Pangaea began to break up about 200 million years ago, and Laurasia separated from Gondwana land in the south. The climate of the globe was almost certainly affected by these continental movements. In Laurasia, it's possible that the climate and vegetation that survived was not suitable for the sauropods, and therefore they died out. Other, smaller, plant-eating dinosaurs appear in Laurasia after the breakup of Pangaea. Dinosaurs such as the duck-billed hadrosaurs and the ceratopsians, like triceratops, became common. These dinosaurs were not as large as the giant sauropods and titanosaurs. Most sauropods, including Saltosaurus, had only simple teeth that could not be used to chew their food. Their teeth were only suitable for raking huge amounts of vegetation into their mouth so it could be swallowed. The smaller, plant-eating dinosaurs that appeared in the northern hemisphere had mouths full of flat teeth suitable for chewing and grinding vegetation. They likely required less food than the sauropods, and their teeth likely allowed them to eat a wider variety of plant foods. Because they could grind up their food before it was swallowed, 
they were probably better at extracting as much energy and nutrition as possible from their food. This was probably enough to enable the smaller dinosaurs to thrive in an environment where giant sauropods may have had a hard time finding enough to eat. As a result, the sauropods declined and died out in the north. Conditions were likely different in the southern hemisphere, Gondwana land, and may have favored the sauropods and titanosaurs. Smaller plant eaters like the hadrosaurs and ceratopsians are not found in abundance in the fossil record of the southern hemisphere, where the titanosaurs continued to thrive. In fact, the titanosaurs not only thrived, but they diversified. That is, many new kinds or species appeared over millions of years. Although they represent the last of the great sauropod dinosaurs, the titanosaurs were not just the last vestige of a dying group. Instead, they were some of the most interesting dinosaurs that lived right up until the great mass extinction that killed off all of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago.